Welcome to Duran's Designs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three types of carvings. A 3D carve, a V carve, and a V carve with clearance tool and border. So let's get started. First off, we'll go to the website freedxf.com. We're going to go to the main page and we're going to go to the woman body 3D wall art. We'll click on that, scroll down, and we're going to pick the SVG file to download. So we'll download it to our computer and then we'll open it up in our Vectric software. So this first design will be a 3D carve. We'll be using Vectric Aspire for that. Uh, if you don't have Aspire, you won't be able to follow along with this one. So we're going to open up a, a new file. On my board, I set the width to 15 inches, the height to 5.1 inches, and the thickness was 1.5 inches. We're going to set the zero position on the material surface, and we'll do the datum position on the bottom left corner. Okay, so now we're going to open up the first file that we just downloaded. You find that on your computer. Then we're going to recenter it, resize it first, and center it down on the board. You're going to hit shift while you're pulling that down, that'll keep it uh, aligned. So we're going to open up our alignment tool. Just make sure it's evenly from the top to the bottom. So we'll just move it over just so you can, if you have your keyboard with you, you can just use your left arrow key, get it to where you want it. Maybe make it a little bigger to fill out the board. Okay, so after we do that, we are going to go to the modeling section and we will create a shape from a vector. We're going to use the dome shape and we're going to go 28 point minus 28.8 degrees. That'll give it a sunken look. Open up the side by side view for 3D. So once you have it the way you want it, and you like the look of it, you're going to scroll down and hit apply. You always got to hit apply. Don't forget to do that. Then we'll close that out. And we'll take a look. It gives a nice, uh, nice look to it on the edges. Okay, so we're going to go over to our tool pass. And I'm just going to use finish toolpath. I'm not going to use a clearance toolpath for this one. It's a pretty small file. So we're going to use offset. We're going to use the model boundary, uh, climb, and we'll calculate. And then preview all toolpaths, and we can see how it's going to look on the board. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to save that. First we have to select a post-processor. I'm using Gerbil in millimeters for my machine. So save that to where you want it. And we can see how long this is going to take to carve. Now it says 44 minutes on there, but that's for some reason uh, Vectric software uses a scale factor of two. So we just set that to one to get a more accurate time and it cuts that in half. So now we'll go and we will find the second file which will be a V carve and that's on the home page too and that one is the woman floral wall art. So download the SVG again and then we will open it up in Aspire. Now these two next images and carves will work on uh, 
the other two Vectrix softwares as well. They're not a 3D. But we're using Aspire, so that's what uh, I'll show you. So we're going to resize this. Now just use your keyboard, move it over, hold shift, bring it down to roughly where you want it. Keyboard again, mouse arrow, or the keyboard arrow down, get it to where you want it, and then arrow key until you get it roughly the way you want it. Then we'll go over to the align tool and we'll align it from top to bottom just to make sure it's centered. And before we carve that, we're going to go over and get the last file. So let's go back to the website, type in sexy woman, and you should be able to find this one. It's called sexy girl wall decor. Download the SVG again, and then we'll open it up and resize it just like we did the other ones. Use your, always use your keyboard keys, the arrow keys to move it over. Use your shift. Resize it. Just get it the way you want. Use your arrow keys again. Put it basically where you want it. Once you have it where you like it, you can go over use the align tool. Make sure it's up and down centered. And now we got all three of the images. Now we gotta check this one. And uh, I noticed this one, the vectors weren't joined. So you go to the join vectors tool, select it all and hit join. And then that will fix the issue with that particular file. Okay, so now we're gonna select the VCarve middle picture. We will go over to our tool path Select V-Carve. So we, uh, you can either use a flat depth or not on this one. It doesn't make a big difference. Uh, I'll show you the difference it makes there. If we'll leave it set to 1.5 and we'll hit calculate. I'll take a look. Preview all tool, tool paths. And that looks pretty good. The vectors are pretty close together, so you're not going to see a huge difference with that. I'll show you the difference if we were to uncheck the flat depth. The flat depth is very important if you're using wide vectors. Uh, it'll make a big difference how deep it goes. This one, it's about the same either way. So you can uncheck that or check it on this particular file. It doesn't matter. So that looks pretty good. We just want to uh, save the tool path before we go back. We'll go down, save that, pick our post processor again, and just save it to where whatever folder you choose. Okay, so we'll go back to the 2D view in the file operations. We'll select the that to make sure, yeah, it's nice and joined. So you don't have an issue with that. You make sure you use the border on this one. Uh, that will make a big difference when we're making the file. So, and this one you definitely want to make a flat depth because you have very wide vectors. So otherwise you'll see lines or it could cut right through, go really deep. And this one, we're going to use a clearance tool. So you want to check clearance toolbox. You're going to pick your tool. We're just going to use a one eighth end mill. You can just use the settings that I have there. I think that's the standard settings. You're going to use the offset for the end mill pass. And this will create two separate tool paths. One will be a clear, one will be the V-carve. So it's showing that we have a few 
issues here if you just search. Uh, I don't think they'll be a big deal. I didn't bother fixing those. You can go in and fix that if you choose to. Okay, so we're just going to preview all toolpaths. And you can see that uh, you have a nice clear left the surface very clear. If, if, if you didn't use that clear pass, you would have uh, quite a few lines from the VCAR bit. So this shows you uh, the, the tools you used and speeds and everything like that. So we're just going to save those files off individually. Let's save the VCARB2 clear one and that's a 1 8 end mill. And then you'll have to change your bit and recenter the uh, reset the Z and you will do the second one which is with the 60 degree V carve. Do you see the with the border on there you're gonna cut the whole thing. Okay now let's go to the carve now and we'll speed that up show you how it went. As always, if you're liking this video, please hit like and subscribe and check every week. I'll be posting a new video, how to videos and tool reviews in woodworking and CNC. And if you're interested in any of the products I use in these videos in my workshop, I have links to all the products that I recommend down in the description. If you'd like to see how I made the enclosure for the CNC, which is the Long Mill MK2 3030 Desktop Edition, I have a link up in the top if you want to click on that right now. So you see this uh, carve's almost done. It took 27 minutes so far, 28 minutes. So you get a better look at my enclosure there. You can see that it really does uh, keep the dust and the noise down, more so the dust than the noise. It cuts the noise about 12 decibels. So the carb's finished now. And you can see the detail is very smooth and very nice with an eighth inch ball nose. So now we'll start the V-bit carb. Now this one I didn't show the setup, but uh, the next carve I'll show you how I set it up and how I change the bits and reset the Z height. So after I finish this particular carve, I stained the board and then re-put it down. Uh, I did that just to show what it would look like to carve into a board that's already stained or painted. Just gives you a different look. So I reset that up after it dried. And I'll show you on this carve how I set the touch plate and set the X, Y, and Z start points. So you want to use uh, the probe. You want to set it up with the diameter of the bit you're using. And you can do the X, Y, and Z. And then when you change the bits, you're just gonna change the Z because you can keep the X and the Y the same. So you're just gonna attach the probe to the bottom left corner. Make sure you put the magnet on the collet. And then you're gonna align the bit to the center of the little circle on the touch plate, at least on this touch plate. And then you're gonna hit probe, uh, and then you're gonna to try to get a, a good connection by touching the plate to the bit. And when it goes blue, you know you're good, and you start the probe. And it'll go through the process of doing the Z and your X and Y zeros. So once that's finished probing, you're going to remove the plate.
Then you're going to go to your X, Y, zero position and you can start the job. Now, before you do that, you want to turn on your router. And in my case, I have a remote Wi-Fi plug that I can start my router or stop it. If I have a problem without opening up my CNC enclosure, it's pretty handy. And like I said, I have a link to that product in the description if you want to check that out. I have two of them now, so I, for my shop, I do recommend them. So you can see cutting into uh, already painted or stained wood gives you a very unique look to the carve. You can, uh, obviously if you use different color woods, you can get a different color contrast, the light and the dark. So this is the end mill, eighth inch, and it's cutting out the clearance. Now, if you were to use the V-bit, like I said earlier, it would leave little lines all through there. It would, uh, yeah, you could go with that look if you want, but I don't particularly like it. It's not smooth and you can definitely see it. Uh, if you see some of the other videos I made, I left left the v-bit to carve the clearance and it doesn't uh it doesn't look as good i don't think in some situations it might be useful but here you can see it's leaving a nice smooth surface and it's quicker as well because you've got a larger diameter of the bit tip to remove more material in some cases you could use a quarter inch end mill, but uh, some of the details in this one are a little fine for that. So in between the arms. So I went with an eight inch, it takes a little longer, but sometimes that's necessary to get the desired look that you're going for. And if you wanted to, you could further paint or color these designs if you wanted to have more contrast. I didn't do that, but in a future video, I'll show you how to do that. You could also add some words or text to the design as well. This is just really a demonstration purposes. You'd want to use nicer wood, maybe think out the layout a little better if you're wanting to display this or sell it. So the clearance toolpath is finishing up now. And then I'll show you how to reset the Z height and change the bit for this carve. Okay, so we're going to get the touch plate and we're going to actually flip it over, get a flat area of the carve, and we're going to remove the end mill and add the 60 degree V bit. That's this one here. It's the speed tool carbide bit, and you can get that on Amazon. I got a link down below in the description. That's pretty much my go-to 60 degree V-bit that I'm using right now. It works really well. It's not too expensive. Now you want to make sure you clear out the dust. Give it a little tap after each carve and change the bits. So it makes sure it can seat up there properly. You don't want it slipping out in the middle of a carve. I've had that happen before. And make sure it's nice and tight. Use two wrenches. They say not to use the red uh, button there to tighten. All right, so you're going to add the magnet back on the collet. And you're going to position your bit just in the center of the lower section of the backside of the probe. 
And this is the probe from CNC Labs that came as an option with the long mill. And then once you set up your probe for just the Z alone, you're gonna just change the diameter of the bit to the quarter inch bit. And you're going to start the probe. I'll go through the process of probing. You need to remove that. And you're just gonna go back to your X, Y, zero. Start your router. And after you've loaded your VBIT file, of course, into your program, you'll start your job. And that uh, carve does not take too long. Now you'll notice that uh, with this size of VBIT, it uh, takes off the stain in the hair. Now you could just assume this woman has blonde hair, or you could uh, you could go and touch that up with a paint pen or uh, some paint or however you choose to do that, or you could just leave it like that. I sprayed some uh, poly, satin poly on that, a couple coats, and that's how it came out. I think it looks pretty good. So thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you would, just hit the like and subscribe button and come back each week for a new video. Thanks and have a great day.